What you're about to see is absolutely real and very dangerous for anyone without extensive training in handling electrical lines. You shouldn't attempt to do any of this on your own. The risk of injury or even death is very high. These are trained professionals. If you look up, you can see power lines like these in many neighborhoods. In other neighborhoods, power lines are buried underground. These power lines bring electricity into homes and businesses. That electricity allows you to turn on the light, watch television, charge your phone, and use household appliances. Those power lines are high off the ground or buried underground because they can also be very dangerous. I'm Jason Birch, one of the engineering managers at Shenandoah Valley Electric Cooperative. I want to take a few minutes to talk to you about how to stay safe around power lines. It could save your life. Touching a live or what we refer to as an energized power line can injure, burn, or even kill you. They're very dangerous. If you see a power line hanging down or touching the ground, you must stay away from it and let the cooperative know immediately. To help me demonstrate some of these safety rules, I'm going to be assisted by linemen from the cooperative. Our specially trained linemen, like these, can safely handle power lines. That's why they wear extensive safety attire. Items like special rubber sleeves to protect the lineman from an accidental contact with an energized electrical source. Or these rubber gloves and glove protectors that provide protection from electricity and from punctures. Linemen also use poles, like these, that insulate them from electricity, protecting them from harm. Now that you've seen some of the equipment our linemen use to work on energized power lines, let's take a moment to look at our demonstration power line unit. Our demonstration unit is built to operate exactly like the power lines you see every day, but everything's on a smaller scale. But make no mistake, even working on this scale down unit is dangerous. Working with this unit requires the same safety precautions and the same years of training that are needed to work on the lines you see in your community. Notice that even though this is a demonstration unit, the linemen are working in their full safety gear. The demonstration unit is now energized and has electricity running through the system. I want you to see the kind of voltage this unit is handling so you can see the conditions under which we're going to conduct this demonstration. The digital meter is reading 15,000 volts. However, the meter is only giving us an approximation of the voltage. Voltage in a wire is like pressure in a garden hose. The more pressure you have in that hose, the more water you can force through it, right? Now compare a fire hose to a garden hose. Our power lines are like that fire hose compared to the wires in your home. For power lines, that means lots of pressure, or in our case voltage, to be able to supply the communities we serve. I can tell you the pressure, or actually the voltage, on this line is 14,400 volts. Compare that with the voltage or pressure in your house. Your house runs on 120 volts. Even handling those wires in your home is extremely dangerous and can be deadly. In a moment, I'll show you what that 14,400 volts of power really means. But first, remember the safety glove like this you saw earlier? They protect linemen when they come into contact with an energized or what you might refer to as a live power line. We have to check every safety glove carefully every single day. Even the smallest hole from a splinter off a wooden utility pole or a cross arm can expose a lineman to deadly electricity. To show you how dangerous even this demonstration line really is, we're going to take a glove with a small hole in it and touch it to an energized power line. That was 14,400 volts that caused the fire on the glove. Because of the tiny hole, the glove material wasn't able to stand up to the stresses that it normally could. Anything touching a power line can be dangerous. That's why it's so important to be aware of anything you put into the air, like a ladder, a TV antenna, or a wire. Here, we have attached a piece of metal to our pole, similar to the material used in a typical television antenna. You can see just how dangerous a contact like that can be. Most materials can also conduct electricity, even some that you might not expect. Wood is a good example. That's why it's important to make sure there are no power lines near any tree you climb. It's also important to make sure trees and branches don't touch wires if you or someone you know is trimming branches or cutting down trees. So let's see what happens when wood comes in direct contact with a power line. One of the linemen has attached a branch to a pole. Watch what happens when it makes contact. 
Those sparks and that smoke coming from the branch show electricity is going through that branch to where it could hurt you if you were touching it. It could also start a fire. Even a simple piece of string can be a danger to your life if it touches a power line. Ever go out a fly kite on a windy day? If you do, be careful of power lines. Here's why. That's ordinary kite string on that pole. We've put a weight on it to make it hang straight down, but it's dangerous even without the weight. On the demonstration unit, we've mounted an ordinary light bulb that'll light up only when a specific circuit is closed. Notice that when the string touches the power line, it doesn't burn up, but it does conduct electricity just like a wire does. That's more than enough to injure or even cause death to someone who holds a string that touches a power line. So we've demonstrated what happens when various objects touch a power line. But what would happen if you touched it? Obviously, we can't actually touch an energized power line, but we can simulate the effects. This hot dog is just like any you'd find at your local store. Watch what happens when the hot dog comes in contact with the power line. An injury like that, if it happened to a person, could easily be life-threatening. And that's just a hot dog. If you actually touch the line yourself while on a ladder or in a tree, you'd send all of that electricity through your body down to the ground. It would likely be deadly. That's also why you should never touch a power line if you see one that has fallen from a utility pole. Any power line may have electricity flowing through it. There's no way to know just by looking at it. Treat any power line that is hanging down or touching the ground as if it were energized and dangerous. Move away from the line immediately. Take note of the location and call your local electric utility to let them know. Children who find a power line on the ground or hanging down should move away immediately and tell their parents to call the cooperative. That way a crew can be sent out to fix the line and keep everyone safe. Speaking of fixing lines, let's take a look at how crews safely work on power lines. If you've experienced an outage at home, the first thing you should do is call the cooperative. A trained member of the cooperative staff in the control room will take the information and call our linemen to investigate. Using our demonstration unit, let's take a look at how they get your lights back on. Many times, the problem isn't a down line, but a blown fuse. There are a number of reasons a fuse can blow, but common ones are when wildlife creates a short circuit or a tree falls on a line. For the purposes of this demonstration, we can't lay an actual tree on these wires to cause a fault. Instead, we'll use our prop tree to create a fault in the line. If a fault caused by something like a squirrel or a tree falling on a line is detected, it'll trip in a second or so, and they can be very loud. Once the lineman finds the blown fuse, they tag the line. This equipment warns other workers that someone is working on the line and not to turn the fuse back on. Now that the problem has been identified and the fuse has been tagged, linemen go to work fixing the problem. No matter what they need to repair, the first thing linemen do is set protective grounds on either side of the issue. The grounds protect the linemen if the line becomes energized while they're still working. These grounds help direct electricity running through the line into the ground and away from the linemen. Now that all of those safety measures have been taken, the workers can begin making repairs to the power line or any other equipment. Once the repairs are done, the linemen will remove the grounds. The linemen will then call the control room to let them know work was done and ask permission to reactivate the blown fuse. This is a crucial safety step. The control room is like the control tower at the airport. They know where each person is on the system and only lets people move when it's safe to do so. Once the lineman receives the all clear from the control room, he returns to the tag and removes it. Finally, the fuse is reset and electricity starts to flow through the line again. On behalf of the men and women of Shenandoah Valley Electric Cooperative, thank you for taking a few minutes to learn more about power line safety. Above all else, remember, never touch a power line even if you think it isn't live. And if you ever see a power line hanging down or on the ground, call your cooperative immediately.